Sean kind of threw me for a loop there. He was standing over beside me the whole time. I had no idea. He was, uh, I'm not used to seeing him on that side of the, of the room. So, uh, well, good morning, church. Uh, glad y'all are here. I know we've got several visitors here, and welcome to you, and uh, glad you're here. Glad that, uh, that you followed God's leading and came to worship with us this morning. Um, we're going to be in John 14 this morning. That's where we're going to start. <clears throat> Um, so go ahead and be turning there. I got. Uh, I do want to tell you that uh, we have uh, on September 30th. We've got a, a rip roaring good time. We've got a business meeting coming up. We hadn't had one of those in a long time. We probably ought to have one. So September 30th, we're going to do that right after service. But also on September 30th, we're having a Rehoboth Day. Now Rehoboth, uh, for those who may have forgotten or may not know. Rehoboth is the, the time when we take up a special offering for uh, paying off the, the debt that's on the, the gym, on the ministry center, the East Campus over there. Um, I can't say enough about how um, blown away I am at this church's faithfulness in giving through the time of, of this pandemic and through all of the uncertainty. You guys have just, it, it, it's been amazing. But with the gym closed down for, for the time that it has been and, you know, those gym fees and all that good stuff, um, that account has dwindled down. And so um, we, we need to have a time uh, where, we, where we give. It all goes towards the principal on the note. And so that will happen on September 30th. So start saving your pennies and nickels and dimes and digging out. Y'all have been on your couch a lot, I'm sure. So there might have been a lot of change that you can dig down there and find in your couch. Um, but, uh, but begin uh, saving up for that uh, so that we can do that. I also want you to know that at the, at the end of the service today, uh, we're going to have a special time of prayer for our students and teachers and, and, and all of those who are involved in our schools. Um, I believe Blue Eye School starts tomorrow and Reed Springs starts uh, on Tuesday. Um, and then for those who are homeschooled, like my daughter, um, they just kind of start whenever mama says. So, um, but uh, anyway, so we're going we're gonna to do that at the, at the end of the service. So uh, we want you to be aware of that. We want you to uh, not leave because we want to take time to, to, to pray, especially for you uh, who are, uh, who are working in the schools and who will be going to school. So uh, this morning, as, as I said, we're going to be in John 14. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a very familiar verse there in uh, verse 6. A lot of folks just kind of stop with that. That's not really where we're going to focus. We're going to focus more down on verse 9. <clears throat> Excuse me, then we'll jump over to the Colossians verse uh, about 30 or 40 minutes into the sermon. So, um, Hopefully it won't be that long. I did tell Pastor this one makes me nervous because I could either roll through this really quickly or I could be up here a long time. So it's uh, I'll try to hit the middle ground on this. Uh, so anyway, for a lot of folks, and in my family in particular, um, there are looks that get passed down from generation to generation. Um, and I'm not talking just the you're in trouble look. Um, I'm talking just just the, the image that uh, that we project. I mean, you all know my son and my daughter. I can't deny them. Um, they, uh, they're, I, I thought about dragging Justin up here with me, but instead we'll, uh, we'll do that. <laughs> He's really not liking me right now. Thing I tell the kids whenever I embarrass them, I said, "At least you'll, at least you'll know what you'll be talking to your counselor about later in life." So, <laughs> but you've got Justin, and then you've got me. I was a little, I was just maybe a year or two older than Justin when that was taken, and then you've got my dad. Jordan saw this picture a couple weeks ago and said. Is that you, Dad? <laughs> there are black and white pictures of me, but no, that was... So all three of us together, you, you kind of get to see a little bit of a resemblance there. 
I couldn't get away with anything. If I had been one that was ever getting in any trouble, which I didn't, um, <laughs> they didn't have to know who I was. If they had met my dad, they knew who to go to. They knew, you know, hey, your, your, your boy was doing, was doing this or was doing that. But again, I wasn't ever getting in any trouble. So a few years ago, I was in a store over in Branson and, and uh, a guy came in that I hadn't seen for at least a couple years before that. And I, Justin was on another aisle from me. I don't know uh, exactly where we were, but this fella comes in and he says, and, and he saw Justin. And then he came just up and down the aisles in the store and he said, I knew you were here. He said, I couldn't remember his name but that was James Talley's boy, so you had to be here somewhere. He couldn't, I mean, he, there, there was no way of getting around it. Certain looks among Talley's are is strong. My sister's got two boys that whenever you look at some of, of, of the pictures of, of them and some whenever I was a kid, um, whenever I was little, it, the, the, the resemblance is there. Um, you can pull those down because that's bad enough, so... <clears throat> but it, it's when you see me, and, and some of y'all have met my folks, some of y'all have met my dad here, and, and, and you've, you've gone up to him and you've said, you know, I don't know your name, but I know that you must be at least somehow kin to James because the resemblance is there. I am my father's son. I am a, just a bigger version of my dad. Um, and so as we, as we Keep that in mind as we, as we go through this today. Uh, you found by now, hopefully, uh, John 14. Stand with me as we read verses 6 through the first part of verse 9. Jesus said to him, talking about Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. Father, thank you for uh, who you are. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for your word. Uh, God, just speak clearly through me today. Uh, Lord, there are so many thoughts rolling around th through my mind on this. And, uh, but may it be clear. May, may the folks listening here and online and on the radio hear uh, the, the truth of the message that you have for them. Thank you again, Lord. It's in Christ I pray. Amen. When we look here in, and, and I mean, John 14, 6, I mean, that is, that is one that, I mean, if you don't have it memorized, you need to have it memorized. I mean, that's, that, that's foundational to understanding and knowing who Jesus is and, and, and knowing about uh, salvation. But so, sometimes we stop there, but I want to go on down to verse 9. You see, the, the, the disciples here are, they're struggling. Um, they're, they're struggling with uh, needing or wanting some assurance of, of just what's going on. You know, Jesus is talking about some things here that they just don't understand. Um, he's, uh, he, he's just told them that one of them is going to betray him. Uh, he's talked about that, that Peter's going to deny him, uh, that he was going somewhere, and they really didn't grasp all that was going on around them. And Jesus tells them that he is the way to the Father but they still didn't seem to get it. They said, show us the Father. Jesus said, but if you, you know, Philip wanted, wanted some sort of revelation. And, and I don't really know what, what Philip was looking for. But he says, show us the Father. He's looking for a, a revelation. Just, just, if we can just see the Father, then we'll believe or we'll, we'll understand. And he really didn't seem to understand what was right in front of him. And in verse 9 Jesus says, the one who has seen me has seen the Father. They still didn't get it. They still didn't understand. I mean, how? when you see me, you see my dad. When you see Justin, 
you see me and my dad and my grandpa and so on and so on. But that's different. We're just a, we're just a reflection of, of the other. So what did it mean for Jesus to say that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? How can they have seen the Father if they'd seen Jesus? Did he just have, the, have godly traits? Or did he have certain characteristics that made him more righteous than others? Uh, did he have special insights into God? Well, certainly all of that is true, but it's not the whole story. You see, there's, there is a difference when you look at, at Justin, and you look at me, and you look at my dad. And there are resemblances there. There are things that reflect one to the other to the other. But that's not the whole story. You're not getting the whole story picture of who we are. You know, my dad uh, and I, we, we look alike. I'm, I'm taller than him. I'm just, like I said, I'm kind of a bigger version of him. Um, <laughs> now, he, he, he's lost weight, oh, but and it's not like he was ever a really big guy, but just kind of where he carried his weight, I knew where I would and am. And um, as I was growing up and seeing that, I was like, all right, so that's the way it's going to be. Well, yeah, that's the way it is. I, you know, right, right. So, um, of course, he works harder now than I ever have, and he's retired, and, um, and so he works it off, and I click a button or move a pencil. So, but there are differences about us. There are differences about our looks. Uh, not a lot, obviously, as you've seen, um, but there are differences about our build. Um, there are uh, <laughs> there are times. And you all have experienced this. I know you have. There are times I hear his voice coming out of my mouth. That creeps me out. I mean, that Jordan's shaking her head, yes, because she can, you know, she's heard Grandpa say certain things and then heard me say them. And it's, the, and, and it's just, but that's the way it is. But I'm just a, I just resemble him. There are differences in attitudes. Um, you know, Justin and I, we have some of the same attributes, but not. But it's not all of who I am. Uh, when you see me, you can see attributes of my dad, but you don't see the full picture. So when Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, he's not talking about it from the same perspective of if you've seen Justin, you've seen James, and if you've seen James, you've seen Jim. It's, yeah, there's J's throughout the whole family, so... Tony's the odd one with the T. Um, but uh, it, it, there, there are differences there because it's with Jesus, it's more than just a resemblance. The disciples, uh, so how were the disciples begin, going to realize that they'd seen the Father? How were the disciples going to recognize the Father? Would they recognize his voice? They said, show us the Father, but what are they really looking for? I mean, how are they going to know? Do they know what they're looking for? Do they even understand? Hey, show us the Father. Well, okay, what do you mean? What do you mean? What are you looking for? What specific characteristic, what specific trait are you looking for that is going to prove that this is the Father? Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Gospels are full of, of G examples of Jesus' character. Uh, you know, they're full of Jesus' claims to equality with the Father. Uh, and other portions of the New Testament uh, bolster these claims. When you go back to John 1.18, Jesus says that Jesus reveals the Father. John 10.30, Jesus says that He and the Father are one. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, uh, Paul says that, that Christ is the image of God. Hebrews 1.3 the writer says the Son is the exact expression of the Father. 1 John 1, 1 through 3, the Son was seen as, and, and testified to, the, to, the, to reveal the Father who sent Him. But what were they seeing? What were they missing when they asked to see the Father? This is where we jump over to Colossians 1, 15. And it says that Christ is the image of, of the invisible God. Now, what is that image? You know, Justin is a resemblance, has a resemblance to me. I have a resemblance to my dad, but I am not the image. Now, we, you know, we, we used to have that saying, well, you're the spitting image of, da, 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 da. but that's not, that's not what we're talking about in a biblical sense here. In the Bible, when we talk about image, whenever it talks here, what Paul says here in in Colossians, that Christ is the image of the invisible God. 
That is how he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Let's talk about what image is. Image, the, the, the concept of image is taught several places throughout Scripture. And there, there's a key thing that, that happens in, in, uh, in Genesis, really, where it all begins and talks about that mankind was made in the image of God. It doesn't say mankind was made the image of God. Mankind was made in the image. Now that sounds small, or you know, like, but it, but it's kind of a big deal here that Jesus is not in the image of God. It says Jesus is the image of God. It's far more image is far more than a simple reflection or a depiction of something else. It's far more than for those who remember taking a picture with film. Uh, it's p far more than the, the negative that, 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 happen, that, that happens there that you go and you get developed. The image here is far more than that. The word for image in the Greek is icon, and it's where we get our English word icon. You know, uh, See, I like those Greek words. The ones that I don't know where the accent went or if the little apostrophe goes this way or this way, those are the ones that will drive you nuts. These I like. These are easy. Um, these make me, look, make me look like I know what I'm talking about whenever I say something about Greek. But the image, the, the, image, the word icon um, that, that's given here, um, icon is, is more than simple reflect, reflection of a likeness. Because likeness can be superficial. Likeness can be uh, incidental. I mean, have you ever seen somebody that, hey, you two look... look kind of a like. Are you related? Uh, no, I don't have a clue who this person is. There can be an incidental uh, likeness that, that happens. That um, They say some people that after they've had their pet for a long time, they start to look like their dog. That's not so much image. You know, that's incidental stuff. That's, uh, and, and so, but image can be artificial. I mean, we see that all the time. We watch we watch movies, we, uh, we you know, watch TV shows, and we see people, um, and then you see other pictures of them, and they don't look anything like what they looked like in that particular show or, or whatever, because some, some, some it, it's artificial. That, 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 that look, uh, likeness can be artificial there. We often think of the word image, again, as we, as we talk about a picture or a facsimile of an original um, a simple representation on a coin. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we, we think about when Jesus talks about, uh, you know, rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar. He asks, whose image is on this coin? Well, that's a, that's a representation of who is there, a depiction on that coin. You know, in icon, rather, the, the word here can be a, it's a fairly common thought for most of us today, whether we actually think about the word or not. Um, it's, it, we use it in various ways. It can be a symbol of something larger. You know, you think about a company logo. That becomes the icon. That stands for um, something larger there. You think about um, uh, it can be a person, somebody who represents a, a larger ideal. It can be a symbol on a computer screen. You know, we all have those icons on our, on our computer screen. And what does that do? It represents something larger, but it gains us access to something larger, hopefully. But the Bible, when it talks about Jesus being the image of God, all of those other definitions do not give us the complete picture. When we talk about the, the biblical connotation of in it, image here, when we talk about Jesus, while he fits all of those others, it's not complete, it's not full and the full picture goes beyond representation. It goes beyond manifestation. You know, Jesus uh, was, was, was God manifested here on earth, but it goes beyond that. Um, Jesus Christ alone truly and fully mirrors the Father as the exact representation of who he is. You, remember, you may remember Pastor Jeff talks about the, um, what, in the Trinity, what's true of the Father is true of the Son is true of the Holy Ghost. That's image. That is the image image that we're talking about here uh, in, in Scripture, what Colossians talks about. And it's why Jesus can say, 
when he's talking to the disciples, if you have seen me, then you have seen the Father because we are one. When you see me, you see him. All three members of the Godhead of the Trinity are part are one in, in the same. Image has intent. It has purpose. It has uh, essential qualities inherent within it. Um, we find this to be true of other passages <clears throat> as well, even though they don't really use the term, the specific term image or icon. Uh, Philippians 2.6 talks about Jesus being in the form of God. Hebrews 1.3, again, talks about the expression, exact expression of God, of the Father. So Jesus was of the same substance, when you start getting into all these theological terms, he, he was of the same substance as the Father, and it wasn't just this physical manifestation. Now, obviously, Jesus was completely, fully man, the physical representation, physical manifestation of him here on earth. That was absolutely true, but it goes so much beyond that. He was, he was more than just a simple representation of the Father. He had the full power, the full authority, and the full existence as the Father, but placed himself into our existence for the purpose of making the Father known. So image, when we, when we see, the father, or see the Son, we've seen the Father. Jesus said to, the, said to the disciples that because they had seen Him, they had seen the Father, and He wasn't talking again about what God may look like physically. We have no idea what God the Father may look like physically. I mean, it says God's got His Spirit. So, I mean, what, what form is He going to take? We don't know doesn't matter. That's not the point that Jesus was saying. He was talking about the fullness of who God is. The revelation of God to, to mankind comes with hope and promise and salvation and relationship and fellowship that pastor's been preaching about the last couple of weeks. This sustaining grace, this, this purpose and a future. When, he, when pastor's been preaching there in 1 John talking about abiding living with God, we do that because of the image of God that Jesus is. The revelation of the, the image of God, though, comes with expectations and responsibilities as well. Um, the Bible says that after we're saved, we are to grow in our Christ-likeness. The Bible says in Romans uh, that we are to be conformed to the image of of Christ. It says in 1 Corinthians 15 that we are to bear the image of the one from heaven. 2 Corinthians <clears throat> says we are to be transformed into the same image as the Lord. How do we do that? Yes, man is made in the image of God, but how do we become more Christ-like? How do we grow in this? The only way is because we place our faith in Jesus Christ, who isn't in the image of God, but is the image of God. Are y'all am I making sense? Am I am I getting that across that He is God? He is the one who shows us who we ought to be. He is the one who gives us the example. He is the one who, yes, manifested God on earth, showed us who God the Father is, but it was beyond just reflecting who God is. It was saying, I am God and follow me. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, what kind of assurance do you think that could give? These, if, if you've got folks who are on the fence, so to speak, you don't, they don't know, they don't, they don't understand what this whole believing in Jesus thing is. And especially then, you know, hey, Jesus, show us the Father and we'll believe. If you've seen me. You've seen the Father. If you've seen me, if you understand who I am, then you'll understand who the Father is and why I'm here and why I, why I came and what salvation is. This image truly reflects who we are to be. We grow into, you know, again, we're, we are created in the image, in the image of God and then we grow into that likeness of Him as we move as we move through our walk, as we learn, again, as Pastor's been preaching, how to abide in Him. When you see Justin and you see me, you don't get the whole picture. When you see Jesus, He gives it all to you. 
He doesn't, ha- he doesn't, doesn't hide anything about the Father from us. He says, this is who God is. This is who I am. Today, I just I, I want to ask, have you met Jesus for who he really is? Are you seeing him as maybe simply a reflection of God? Do you understand him as God? Do you understand him? Are you still seeking God, but don't understand that the the one who he sent to be your savior is God? The image of God, that icon, Jesus, gains us access to the Father, gains us access to heaven. It gains us access to everything that, that, we, that we've talked about with the, the promise, the hope, the salvation, the relationship, the fellowship, the grace, the purpose, and the future. I said, you know, like, like you know, when we, when we click on that icon on your, on your computer screen, that it's, it opens up something far greater than what you have that you just see on your screen. And there's so much more that's going on you know, all the little wires and connections that are, that are in your computer. Are you seeing, do you, do you understand who Jesus is, that he is that, that icon that gives you access to so much more? The disciples didn't seem to understand it at that moment. They would, they would come to understand. But do you today understand that with Jesus, you have access. With Jesus, you have it all. You have everything that God offers you. There, it's not Jesus and, it is Him alone. Perhaps you know Jesus is your Savior, but are you growing to be more like Him? Are you abiding in Him? Pastor's going to be taking up uh, 1 John again, I believe, and uh, it kind of... He sent his he emailed out his outline for next week before I got this one done, and I'd had the outline on this one for about three weeks. So um, he's he's ready to go. It's 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 in his mind. He's been thinking about abiding in God and being back there in First John. Are you growing more like Christ? Are the family traits showing through you? There are things about. Again, about the, the, the look that, that Justin has, I have, my dad has. Family traits that show through. There are family traits about being in the family of God. There are family traits that ought to show through whenever you have committed your life to Christ. Are they? If they're not, today is the time to change that. Not tomorrow, not the next day. Not waiting for Pastor Jeff to be back in the pulpit. It, today is the time because God doesn't promise us tomorrow. If you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation. Again, not next week. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised our next breath. Recognize Jesus for who He is. Because if you've seen Him, you've seen the Father. As a believer, does your talk match that Of your heavenly father. When you say something. Do you say. I don't think the disciples would have said that. Or do you. Sometimes. Marvel and say wow. Where would that come from. I say that like I said. I say things to the kids every now and then. That I'm like. Oh I don't know where dad came from. But he's in there somewhere. But do you say that about your, your, your heavenly speech, that sometimes you say something, it's like, oh God, you must have been here for that because I wouldn't have thought of that. There's times in the office that somebody will say something, you know, whether it's pastor or me or Sean or whatever, it's like, that was God that said that. And then we got all right, we got to go write that down because we're not smart enough to remember it. But are you, is your trust In the one who said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Today I'll invite you just to make that sure. Make that certain. To know that you know that you know. That because you know the Son, you know the Father. I thought about 
<laughs> told Lisa we ought to play the old Paul Overstreet song, I'm Seeing My Father in Me, for an invitation song. Um, probably not completely appropriate for church. It's a good song, though. But are you seeing the Father in you? Are you seeing, have you met the Son and in such a relationship with the Son that the Father shows through you today? Pray with me, please. Father, I do thank you for who you are again. I know a lot of you have been asking about our financials after we went through a few months of not meeting together in person, and I want to commend you because you have been fantastic. We are up to date, or to this date, we are um, only $2,100 behind where we were last year. So we're still behind, but we're not near as bad as a lot of places are. Coming up on September 30th, we're going to have Rehoboth Day. Now, Rehoboth Day is a day that we set aside to take a special offering above our tithes and regular tithes and offerings so that we can pay down the principal on our ministry center at East Campus. Now, our debt is about $650,000. It's come down from $125,000, uh, excuse me, from a million two hundred fifty thousand. So. We've really done a great job. You've done a great job on that. But this coming 30th of September, we need to take another offering for Rehoboth. We usually take it once a quarter. We haven't been able to do that. So make it a matter of prayer. Uh, don't let it be your regular tithes and offerings. Uh, make it be what God lays on your heart. But I want again to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, you have been amazing during this. We hear horror stories everywhere else uh, and in many places about how their church is struggling financially. And uh, thanks to the staff who have done a great job in watching expenditures. And at the same time, thanks to you for giving to the Lord. I love you. Thank you again. Now let's have a great day in the Lord. Are you a member of First Baptist Church of Kimberling City and want to stay better connected to the church? Maybe you are a first-time visitor and would like more information about our church. Text in Church is a new service being offered by our church to help you stay informed. Here's how it works. Open the text app on your smartphone. In the phone number or to field, enter the phone number 417-815-3800. If you are a member, type member in the message field and tap send. If you are a visitor,
type welcome in the message field and tap send. In a few minutes, you'll receive a thank you text. Then you'll receive a second text that has the registration link in it. Simply tap on the link, fill in the form, and then tap submit. That is all there is to it. It's easy and all of your information is secure and will never be shared. So what are you waiting for? Get connected. Hey folks, I want to talk to the young families out there. Uh, some of you have taken our Building King Kingdom Families trip uh, the last couple of years, and some of you have considered it and maybe just not been able to. Right now, we are still planning on taking that trip December 26th through January 1st back down to Laguna Beach Christian Retreat back down in Panama City Beach, Florida. But we want to talk to you on Sunday, August 30th, right after the worship service here in the sanctuary. Uh, we want to get some uh, some input from you on this trip and just have a chance to talk to you briefly about that. That's Sunday, August 30th, right after the worship service. You can also find some information in these pamphlets that are in your life groups, or I'll have some with me as well. So look forward to seeing you. Look, for, look forward to talking to you on Sunday, August 30th.